What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, James Gunn has been tweeting some stuff. Interesting things, Brian. Things for us to sort of gaze and ponder. He's tweeted about Justice League Unlimited, which is one of my favorite animated uh, uh, shows. Uh, I'd say top five, Brian. Uh, he's also spoken of the movie uh, All-Star Superman, which made me go watch it. Because uh, I've seen it before and I liked it. It was had a lot of very interesting, a lot of very good ideas regarding Superman. Uh, and Superman up in the sky. Brian, which one which one of these uh was the latest in terms of him posting uh, 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 an image of a, a specific storyline in order i believe it was justice league unlimited and then there's an image he posted of superman um with lois on the moon which was from tom king's up in the sky and then he there's a shot where he shows like basically all-star superman the comic and then he says this is a comic i've read emphasis many many times and so people are trying to say, well, James Gunn doesn't really do things idly. So what is he trying to tell you with kind of these different things that he's putting out there for a script that we know is largely written? Um, internet tried to make us early profits. There was a Jacob Elordi casting rumor that went around. James Gunn shot that down. Listen, there's no way Superman is cast right now. It doesn't sound like he is going to necessarily wait to sign a director if he feels like he has his Superman, if that makes <clears> sense. <throat> it does sound like the studio and him, and he is the studio in this case, would sign their Superman, even if they're still looking for the director. Now, I think there's a dark horse chance the director is in the fold, and we just don't know it yet. But uh, I think you're not going to get, he said you're not going to get Superman cast until he feels the script is polished. So he did say that. So yeah, no. Any casting rumor right now is is just that. Let's start with Justice League Unlimited. Look, we'll kind of work through these. And I just wanted to, as you said, these are not going to be literal adaptations. Yeah. So what we're looking for is the DNA and the fingerprints of little things that could be brought into James Gunn's Superman film. And do we think they're good ideas and commercial ideas that, that can come from that? So if you were to take Justice League Unlimited and say, I just want to put the spotlight on Superman, within the cartoon what would you like what stands out to you like what would you want them to kind of utilize about that kind of george newburn voiced version of superman and kind of bring into this this film i mean superman when it's come to justice league and team efforts he's usually not the strongest let's say uh, you know he's, he's usually one of the first ones everybody wants to take out first and they usually succeed so that makes him kind of whack. But he's the one thing about Superman is that he's well respected. Mm -hmm. And he's a heavy hitter in whatever room that he enters. And that is one thing or one aspect of him that he commands respect. And uh, and that's sort of something that I want to see in, in this iteration. Uh, and something that I... You know, I hope that they take from the the Justice League Unlimited uh, stories because uh, he was never the, he had his few storylines. Brian, I think the, which one where he was like I think banished into another dimension and he grew a beard. He had a fight and some stuff. But he had his moments, Brian. Yeah, those are some aspects that he's looking to take from the Justice Justice League Unlimited um, stories. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I agree with you. I think actually. Justice League Unlimited, if I just look at it through a Superman lens, is not one of my favorite Superman iterations for the very reason you said, is that he takes a lot of punishment and he's disabled very easily in a lot of these conflicts because the writers of the cartoon understood if he was actually turned loose in all of these situations, they'd be over in two seconds, which is what makes his moment with Darkseid so memorable at the end of that show, where I think even the writers said, all right, we got to give <laughs> dude his shine for like 25 seconds where he could just go absolutely yeah. nuts. 
What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose and show you just how powerful I really am. He still captures the essence of what Superman stands for in that show. Like his relationship with the populace is still kind of properly shown to the point where when they explore the whole Justice Lords parallel universe, it's what makes that episode to me very powerful. This version of Superman will not mirror that one in the sense that that one is drawn and acts probably about 20 years older, I would guess, than the one we're going to get. So yeah. my number one thing, if he was to do it, is really take is for James Gunn to really take his comment about the world being somewhat established and take it to its extreme, which is treat your Superman story as existing in a world where the Justice League itself is known and exists. I would have no problem with that. The show was pretty good at localizing episodes around two or three characters. Not every episode involved the entire league. So I actually would be pretty cool with like, if Watchtower is spinning in space at some point, and you just see it as he flies by, thumbs up. Like if you're doing things like that, I hope he just says like, fine, the entire world of the Justice League exists. And a lot of these heroes are already known quantities. A lot of the villains are already known quantities. We're just gonna focus on a younger Superman story that doesn't require the intervention of Green Lantern or Martian Manhunter or Batman, but they're all out there. Superman up in the sky, What's that story about? Because I'm not too familiar with that one. So he tweeted a picture, like I said, of Superman and Lois basically having a date and a picnic on the moon. And I know you and I are sort of in the camp, but we're kind of hoping we don't have to spend a lot of time with the romance yet because he's too young. I don't think James Gunn was sending that message. What that comic is known for is it's kind of written like each chapter or each issue really tries to drill down on one aspect of what it means to be Superman. And so the perspective changes. And so the focal point of the narrative changes. I think that's what James Gunn is trying to tell us is that I intend to do a deep dive character study of Clark Kent and Superman. And it's going to be emo like the scene he tweeted it. It is romantic, but I think the idea is it's more emotional. There's a real heart to what I am trying to tell. And this comic was maybe unique in sort of, you know, basically approaching Superman, not as a superhero, but as a very complex sort of individual to be almost like psychoanalyzed, broken down and dissected. What do you, like what aspects of Superman or Clark Kent's persona or personality do you most want to see kind of brought to the fore? Some of those things that you described uh, with uh, Superman up in the sky are similar things that I saw in, Superman All-Star. Uh, what makes him Superman? What is he thinking? If you know the storyline, he knows that he's dying mm -hmm. because he exposed himself to the sun, like literally like right there, right? And he got overexposed. And, and now he knows that this is happening and now he's doing all these things that are like, when you think about it, like it's crazy, right? Like he's doing all these things and he's able to do all these things and he's, you know, holding something up that's a trillion tons or whatever. It's crazy. But they show you, Brian, at one point, uh, I think the, the editor uh, is calling out for Clark and some, and, and, and Superman is on his way. And what does he do? He saves a kid from getting hit from a bus. Yeah. And he's rushing, right? So it's those things, Brian, Answering those questions, what makes him Superman? And it's not his flying. It's not his super strength. We know all of these things. It's all the things that he has to deal with knowing what he can do. That's what makes Brian. I was thinking about this the other day in the first Superman. What did he say to himself? He said, and this is what after his father passed away. With all these powers, and I couldn't even save him. And with all these powers... He does everything that he possibly possibly can to try to help people, which we saw really none of in Man of Steel. He saved a, a dude falling. Okay, yeah, he's, <laughs> and, and Lois. he saved he saved Lois like three or four times. <laughs> yeah, 
So again, it's not his po powers. It's not his abilities. We all, we, it would be cool to make it look dope, Brian. I'm looking forward to seeing something different because I'm done with the flying effects and all this other stuff. So Your what thoughts on that part? Yeah. So what up in the sky actually got me thinking, even though, so again, that's an older super, that's a prime of life Superman. But what it got me wondering and thinking was how much actual Superman do you need in this film for it to be great? I, I, this is a serious question. Like if this is, if we spent 90 plus 90% 90 of this movie and he's in Clark Kent form, no cape, no suit, is it wrong? I kind of feel like that could work. Like, so he's he'd be using his powers secretly on occasion when needed, but you're really kind of spending time with the dilemmas. Like the, the powers become like, they're almost like shining a light into, as you said, all the things he's hearing. How does he decide what to do? If you're trying to make Superman modern, right? Like you've got to import some piece of society, which has become very complex, right? It's hard to say there are like, unilateral good guys and bad guys in a lot of cases now but that's what superman kind of stands for this unilateral good guy so i would love to see him tackle that and kind of be like or and honestly make a mistake or two like make a choice use his powers to help someone and then realize like oh i like i i just facilitated evil in it unintentionally by doing mm -hmm. that like so that's what i mean like how much superman do you how much blue suit cape s do you need in this movie for it to really work you know, I, I agree that part of Clark Kent, which is if you saw All Star Superman, you can almost believe why nobody can tell that that's Superman. I know it's easy to say in animation, but live action, I think Christopher Reeve pulled it off quite great, you know, in my opinion. Um, and in Man of Steel, uh, they pretty much abandoned that uh aspect of it not because they wanted to abandon it but because they were the, because of the story that, that they were telling he was not yet clark kent but even so in dawn of justice he wasn't even really clark kent either he was already a reporter but what i mean i, I think Zack snyder though like he, he he committed to a visual choice which was once yes. superman was revealed in that film he wanted superman in the suit as much as possible so he kind of dispensed with the clark kent persona once he had reached the ship you know, talk to Russell Crowe, gotten his suit. From that point on, I mean, clock the minutes, he's basically in the suit the majority of the rest of the film. So that, I mean, that's a, that's a director's choice. I just, I just wonder if it might make sense to try the other way and see how audiences respond to it, where it isn't so much the flying and the punching and, you know. It's the, it's the, Lois, I never lie. That's what <laughs> I want to see. So the, you, you remember the seriousness of what he said to her? Lois? Hmm? I never lie. So All-Star Superman. Now, yes. let's bring that into the discussion because All-Star, so a lot of things there. All-Star Superman, I, I did want to raise this question. So one thing All-Star Superman introduced pretty successfully was it gave Superman a different vulnerability, right? It basically, they found a way to basically be like, it isn't just green rocks. By doing this like, and Lex is involved, I think, in the like over radiation exposure, which basically puts it's him part on the of clock. His plan. <laughs> so exactly. And so I guess my question is, is James Gunn trying to send us a message there? Maybe not that they don't maybe they don't copy this exactly, but this idea that his Superman might have vulnerabilities or a vulnerability that isn't just kryptonite. And if so, how do we feel about that? I mean, for me, when watching All Star uh, Superman All Star. I think he asked either Lex or Lois, I forget what it, who it was, did you ever think about your mortality? Something that he never had to ponder before. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very interesting. I think his vulnerability has always been... Uh... The people! The people! <laughs> yeah! No! Don't do it! The people! And then he just realizes I can't fight these dudes here and I'm a lead. Mm -hmm. Then you get the classic, Superman didn't even do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, 
That's I, I don't know I don't know the answer to that question, Brian. What his vulnerability was, because I don't presume to think that James Gunn is gonna do a story arc or uh, or put him in a position where he may perish. I don't know. At least not this early. So that's still a question. I think in terms of kryptonite, it'll be interesting how he reacts to it. I want to I want to see something different, Brian. Well, I'm just wondering if there's no kryptonite mm -hmm. at all. That's what I, that's what I like. This this story right intro introduced the idea that there was something fatal to Superman besides kryptonite, and I thought the interesting thing about it was they actually used the very thing that gives him his power, and that's what made me wonder, with especially with a young Superman, could James Gunn realistically or conceivably change canon a little bit and say, look, Superman not at the height of his powers actually could be vulnerable, and maybe we'll make the sun both the source of his power and his vulnerability. I, I'm just wondering if he's going to say like one of the issues that we've run into, which I think is correct, yeah. is that because Superman is so strong, having this rock conveniently appear to disable him gets a little old. And so you have mm -hmm. to find other ways to jeopardize him to make the story have stakes. And that that was one thing I kind of thought about. Now, the other thing I wondered about was, as you said, we basically in this story get the version of Superman's bucket list, right? He once he finds out he has to hear to live. That's basically what this story becomes, right? He he has to come to grips with his life, and we get he becomes he becomes a version of Hercules, right? The twelve labors of Superman. This feeds into something that I've been wondering about because you and I do not want to see him punching Zod for the again, like we've done that <laughs> so many times. But then it comes to the question of like, what do we actually want to see Superman do? What feats? that only he could do do we actually want to see so how do you feel about this idea of something like the 12 labors of superman something that is like not necessarily based on a mano a mano showdown but situations and feats that only he could possibly you know surmount i'm fine with that brian they just gotta make it look quite impossible it, it has to look amazing it has to look super you know, he has to earn that Superman, that name. Uh, in terms of people looking at him that in that way. But we know that his powers, although they make him uh, who he is, is not all that he is. And I think that's what we lost sight of in, in previous, in the previous iteration. And I think we need to get back to that along with these incredible feats that don't look easy to him. Um, they, I think if you put some stakes, you make us feel that it can go wrong. And somehow this guy is able to do it and make us cheer. I think you win. What's the closest you think any of the Superman films to date has gotten to what you just described? There were some hints of it in Superman Returns. That's funny you say that. That was the one I was going to say. I was wondering if the one at the end where he lifts that kryptonite laced island is actually oh, no. in a weird way. Is that the, or is it him saving Metropolis? Which one is the one that's like the closest we got to what you're describing? Um, the because I think that movie was trying it. I think yeah. he, I think Brian Singer taboo name, but Brian Singer was <laughs> trying for that. Him, yeah, that yeah, he he did try. Uh, and he almost there was Brian. I think one of the best landings is that Superman landing in Superman Returns. Oh, you mean on the crypt on the island where he just yeah. comes in at full speed? Yes, that, um, him saving Metropolis, doing various things, uh, to save people, um, when he was under the tunnel. They, he, they did those action sequences were pretty, they were done pretty well, Brian. Um, but I think they did too much with terms of the superman i don't know it just it just felt weird yeah they tried. it doesn't yeah it, it in that movie it's weird because that movie like between the plane rescue the metropolis rescue and then ultimately the island lift it almost it almost became repetitive yeah um but i just bring up the island lift because obviously with the kryptonite he's weakening as he's lifting the island and the idea is that it's just his will right it's just his will to save everyone that's carrying him up into outer space um you know, I, I, so I, I saw what was they were trying to do. I was then I was trying to think like Superman, the movie, you know, the 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 moment that leads to Lois dying and him reversing the kind of rotation of the Earth. Is that the other one that's kind of like oh, granted, okay. it's 70s filmmaking? But is that the other one that sort of approaches, 
you know, I got to go to Hackensack and then I got to go to the other side of, you know, the country. No, 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 no. I, I was thinking of that, but I thought you were, because I thought, you know, those movies did that for me, what I described previously. Okay, I, that's what I was wondering. Like, is that, you know, is that like, these are the, the feats of Superman that don't require a Zod, that don't require a, a doomsday, that like are simply about him doing impossible things that are on Earth. The, and, and Superman, the, the movie... Um did a lot of those things because there wasn't a Zod. There was just him having to do all these things at the same time and someone perished because of a promise. Right? And then he right. did the really impossible thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, okay. But whatever. It's those little things, Brian. That, but, that... I'm with you. I actually, as we started down this discussion, in the category of not being in the suit, but doing Superman things. I actually think, you know, Christopher Reeve, that was, I, I actually love the little bits. Like when he catches the bullet and he's wearing the suit, I love that scene. Yeah. I absolutely love that scene. I also, I love the scene in the diner where he gets revenge on that dude at the end. Oh, of yeah. The That's, That's funny. That. I've never seen oh, garbage. I've been working out. Like, I absolutely love that scene. <laughs> it's so funny. But it's so good. He can make that work. So I don't think they have to be as comic or as brazen. But I wouldn't mind a few scenes like that where it is just Clark and he does something. And like, even if a person looks at him kind of fish eyed, like what, what just happened? You know, like yeah, yeah. But he's doing something at a very micro level that is really important to your point, whether it's saving a kid or um, doing something. He just can't, he can't look away. So, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think these, I, like I said, nowhere in what James Gunn has tweeted is this mega villain which i think is encouraging right there's no sign of dark side there is no sign of zod there's no sign of doomsday he does not seem like he is focusing on a super fight in his superman i think that's a good move i i do i really think that's that's, that's more potential. <laughs> but that's not that kind of villain though right that's yeah, more like yeah. a puzzle that's more like a frustration type of villain it's not like you're trying to go one-on-one -on -one with him and but it challenges know, who God. he is i think yeah his reality I, so yeah. I, I, it'd be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what what James gonna have up his sleeve, man, because he does. Uh, you know, he you've seen his movies. You know what sort of things that he likes to do in his films. Uh, so Superman. This sounds like this is someone who has, like, I'm doing this, attitude, and we're gonna do it, and. Uh, it has everyone excited, Brian, because we're getting hints, but we know nothing yet. But it has we, all we do worried. know is we get yeah. we. But yeah, it has a little bit. But I'm not too worried. I think the over the excitement is overwhelming because is he's given us clues to what we should look at as inspiration, and I think that is a positive thing because so far the things that he's shown us, good things. Yeah, I agree. And and so I'm and not goofy and not goofy things, right? None of yeah. none of what he tweeted is like, oh, I'm gonna get bumbling, wisecracking Superman all the time. Like, yeah, I, I, we criticize James Gunn for his humor, but but it, you know, at the end of the day, like we've seen plenty of times where actors, writers, directors cut their teeth and make their bones in one genre, and then all of a sudden they show up and they pull something out, and they do something in another genre. Where you're like, I didn't know they had that in the bag. You know, and like so, we're hoping that's what this that's what this looks like. I think that's so so funny is literally every day he's getting trolled for like, where's the announcement? Why don't we have the announcement? Mm -hmm. He won the other day where they were like, there was somebody who tweeted at him like, you promised us an announcement. Where is? <laughs> he's like, he's like, he literally wrote back, it's the 18th. <laughs> it's like, like, people got to chill. <laughs> they got to settle down. Like, oh my god, uh, right? It's like, yo, <laughs> really, yo. <laughs> relax damn <laughs> thirsty yo it's like come on man it's like this this there's a lot of people that just want stuff brian and if they don't get it they go crazy but those are the sort of people that that they want it so bad that they'll be happy with what anything that they that's on screen you or know they and want it, it or they want it so they can rip it right i do think yeah. there's a piece of the there's a piece of the fan base that is lurking here waiting yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting yeah. to come out and just trash whatever whatever the, the the choices are here. But all I'm saying is that the 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 breadcrumbs that are being dropped, if nothing else, are pointing at 
a an attempt at a Superman story that we have not seen yeah. on screen. And that to me is worth taking a shot at. Hells yeah. Hell yeah. Hopefully we get this this announcement soon. Cause there's gonna be a lot to talk about. And I'll just keep saying it because I'm on this train. I think you agree with me is like a, a film that's a little more Clark Kent centric is also cheaper. Oh yeah. Uh, if they do it that way, Brian is also cheaper and just if you make two, three dope action sequences. And have him, he can be in Superman costume and doesn't have to do craziness. He does not. Last thing before we go, does it concern you, Brian, because he only has this four-year contract, does it scare you that he might give us too much too soon? You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I, I think it's a risk. I think the two safeguards to that, though, are... Warner Brothers just did that and failed spectacularly. I mean, literally just did what you're describing, which is cut, skip steps and rush to get yeah. a Justice League movie on screen. So I feel like the cautionary tale is in-house and right there. And that gives him the credibility to say, like, I am absolutely not repeating that. And I think the other thing is, look, he does hail from the MCU, right, which took its time to get to Endgame and bet on itself effectively when there was no guarantee they would get a shot to do even in Avengers 1, let alone what became, you know, Infinity War and Endgame. So I tend to think James Gunn at his core, it's more, he's more a creator and artist. Like this is this, I doubt he wants to tell the grandest scale Superman story out of the gate. He clearly doesn't based upon the age of the character that he's choosing. So I think he's going to bet on himself and kind of say like, if I get chapter one's right, then I will get a big new contract to do chapters two and three. Last question. I think it, I think you've pointed out, and you pointed it out earlier too, in terms of it being cheaper. In terms of the goal, Brian, to turn a profit. I think once we get a whiff of budget, we'll know what type of movie we're getting. Totally agree. Yeah, I think I mean, like I said, the person who's playing Clark Kent and Superman, I mean, their payday is going to be like two to three million tops and it might even be lower than that it might yeah. be like one million a lot a lot of back end i agree with you i think the budget for this is probably going to be like 100 to 150 max yeah. and probably even the low end of that because again if they tell a good story and they get good reviews and people are like this is a breath of fresh air oh honey easy oh not even i go bigger i'd say yeah. superman you're getting i mean man is Man of Steel in today's dollars was an eight hundred million dollar movie. They will yeah. they will get to that level because it is Superman, and then people will be hyped for the, but the profit. I mean, I, I say four hundred easy, but because I mean, there's profit there. Oh, four hundred, they make money. But yeah. like, I think if he if he gets if he gets the level of critical acclaim that his other projects have gotten, and it's Superman, he's making more money. They're making more money off that. Yeah. yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Uh, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Share with your friends. Please comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you guys think. We like to respond. I like to read your comments and respond. Um, Freddie, shout outs to you. We had a conversation, Brian, Freddie, and I, and Tracy. Uh, and Freddie said he doesn't think Angela Bassett is going to win the Oscar for, for Best Supporting Actress, which is blasphemous for me. That's, that, that's she's crazy. winning. She's winning the. She's winning the awards leading up to it. So I think she, yeah. she's not the favorite. She's going to be, you know, one of the betting favorites on the night of. So. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.